back to the podcast. I am your host, Mr. Made Over. And I am the lovely co-host, Mrs. Made Over. And today, we have another hitter for you today. Um, we actually have someone who can give you a crazy story and who can actually tell you good times and bad times. So... I'm going to have my wife introduce this person because I do all the introduction for the most part. <laughs> so this not. time, I am going to have the lovely Mrs. Mo introduce our guest. Preston L. Powell Sr. is a native of Columbus, Georgia. In 1991, Mr. Powell accepted his call from God to create World Changes Tabernacle Church. Reverend Powell is a well-known community advocate in the Columbus area. Reverend Powell has served his service includes vice president of Muskogee Clergy Association, Columbus, Georgia, president of Muskogee County Prison Board in Columbus, Georgia, volunteer assistant coach, youth football program, Columbus Parks and Recreation in Columbus, Georgia, and Prophet Powell is the author of several inspirational books. So as you all listen, we will give some Right. <laughs> but we want to welcome Reverend Powell to Made Over Podcast. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for Y'all joining. Know. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Um, I know you have a busy schedule, so we are not going to tie you up with too many questions because I know <laughs> you're full of knowledge. Somewhere around here, the title is, you know, From the Pit to the Pit. Which, you know, that's basically from the pulpit mm-hmm. to the barbecue pit. Yes. <laughs> from from flipping souls over to being saved <laughs> <laughs> to now flipping ribs, to over ribs over and saving your appetite. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting oh, fed God. both ways. So, um, sir, um, I guess one thing I want to, uh, and I always ask people, that this thing that you are into because i want i want to start off with basically pulpit because in order for us to get to the actual pit master i know you had to go from the pulpit to this type of stuff so my thing is like i always say you got to have a why Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in anything that you do so what is your why to push you to now i i know the some people get a calling but they, they they hit that decline button so what made you actually say, you know, some, yeah, I'll follow them and this is what I'll do. Well, first of all, let me uh, say thank you to you and uh, Ms. Mo uh, for being on your podcast. It's always an honor and privilege to come and share mm-hmm. wisdom and knowledge and uh, understanding. Uh, my my adventure in, in ministry uh, started off with the calling. Uh, not only with the calling, but with the acceptance of the calling. And then... I'm not like some preachers say, well, I got my God, and it forced me, he had to make a brick fall off the top of the roof on the head and stuff like that. Like he, he threatened to kill me. If he gonna kill me, he don't even use it. So that <laughs> right. ended up in my platform. Right. But what I did know that there was a, a, a time of a spiritual uh, connection. Mm-hmm. See, I wasn't raised in the church. I wasn't birthed in the church. So we went to church twice a year, Christmas, Easter. And uh, when the preacher began to speak, I would just go to sleep. Immediately, because we not talking about that. So as a kid, right. that was not me, and uh, so that's why I made this gesture. I said, I, I don't like church. Right. Uh, I don't like uh, uh, man-made uh, religion. I, mm-hmm. I like relationship with the Father. So my why is this? Why not me? Mm-hmm. All the people he could have called, he chose to call Praise and Power. He didn't call me prophet. He didn't call me pastor. He called me by my name. Yeah. And uh, I had that uh, moment of uh, encounter with him uh, as an early age from the fifth grade the lord had spoke to me as a child about Mm -hmm. my future and that was amazing because i wasn't raised in the church so i didn't have that encounter Mm -hmm. but i remember so vividly to this day my testimony is how the lord uh spoke to me uh in a vision that i actually went into a what you call a trance and i saw the father on the on the on the throne i couldn't see his face but i identified it was been him and there was these other men on the throne all across the stage with him Uh Uh, and that I, I that I received a call. Never told my mother about it, and the same thing anyone about. It. I just kept it to myself. Uh-huh. But I just thought, you know, just going visiting different churches. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I became in relationship with the father that way. 
Wow. wow. <laughs> so, um, what has been your most rewarding um, moment hmm. being in the pulpit? What has been the most rewarding moment for yeah. you? Well, there's been so many, I would say, rewarding moments. Goes back to again as a child, I was you know I'm a child of eleven, uh, which was ten surviving. My mother, uh, first daughter, uh, died in, mm -hmm. uh, as a stillborn, and uh, so I'm the baby of the ten, or the baby of the eleven. So uh, it became you know, you know what? Honestly, it, it's just like this: to do what God called you to do without any training, and do it the right way. Do his empowerment. Yeah, it's a reward. It's being able to say, Lord, I can't take glory. I can't take credit. Yeah, because of my seminary training. I had, I, I didn't attend seminary at the time. I became, I got involved with seminary probably about fifteen years after being in ministry. Wow. Not, it's not preaching, pastoring, mm -hmm. but after years of ministry, mm -hmm. I went and got my associate in biblical studies. And uh, that reason, I believe, was to keep me from being pious or uh, arrogant about. Uh, my credentials. So yeah. when I minister, I minister from the heart. Yeah. There's my platform that you know only God can be using this man this time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So and that's I know, what we Being and able I, to speak to God's people on a regular basis mm -hmm. and have yeah. something to talk about. I just made up sermon. <laughs> right. Not a call to <laughs> sermon. Not an <laughs> online sermon. Right. Not a word from God. That's reward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, I'm, I, and I know for me, a lot of times we wait for other people to qualify us. Mm -hmm. But Yes. You accepted the qualifications from God And I think that's the separation mm -hmm. Like even with knowing You know I know a lot of times we look at You know um, Who we are our, uh, Basically like our What we're inadequate to right. do And for you to actually do that It, it speaks volumes And I guess my, my next question Would be um, What is Your goal in ministry like like what is your ultimate goal after it's all said and done what is your ultimate goal well uh that's i, I appreciate the word uh, ultimate goal because the ultimate goal would limit me to just one major goal outcome yeah. i have multiple goals yeah of major that they're, they're ultimate because yeah. uh to, to to be a pastor and what, and what we call it today's time founder i mean mm -hmm. you know, God called you to, to actually establish a church, mm -hmm. and thirty years later, you're still doing it. Mm -hmm. You're still pastoring the same church. Yeah, passing different people because people come and go. Right, but you still pastoring the same people with passion, and with the reality that if you didn't do it, you have no fulfillment. So mm. my fulfillment is preaching the word of God. So my goal is is to always uh, push the people to that. To that close relationship with the father be able to show them that's a better way yeah now i can preach fire and brimstone but is that going to change the heart mm. or i can preach fire and brimstone with compassion and passion that can transform the heart because mm. we live in a time where people uh you gotta know how to work with them mm -hmm. yeah uh, can't be the old method hell you don't hell you go hell you do so you gotta be <laughs> well this is what the word says yeah but this is the option you have because if the father doesn't force himself on the one, why would I? So my right. goal is, mm. is to motivate and train people, which is my motto, is to teach and preach a simple gospel that all can live by. Yeah. So mm -hmm. from the smallest to the oldest, you can say, hey, I remember what Pastor Powell said this. I remember what Prophet said this. And my life has been uh, transformed to this, what it is today, because he set goals for me. Uh, right. I, yeah. I do a thing called, uh, in training my leaders, uh, it's called a process. And when that consists of it's helping them to process their daily uh, activities through the, through the week. Yeah. To be able to go back and say, I did accomplish this. So not only do I set goals for myself, I set goals for my for the parishioner. I'm mm. going to be able. <laughs> Got you. And I think that um, now. <laughs> <laughs> um just listen at you saying like you your one of your things is to just teach a simple gospel. And so from hearing your messages, it is very simplistic. It is just straight forth. Um, it's not all the, the hooping and hollering, hollering you know. It works. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not all of that. But then the I think my favorite part is when I when I listen to your messages um, is the applications that you do. Um, I think it's very rare that at the end of your messages there aren't applications. You always give, um, you know 
whether they're listeners or whether they're members, you always give them something to apply to their life. Yeah. And it's simple things. It's just, okay, well, then now you're going to do it or you not, you're not going to do it. So it's taking the scripture and then teaching them how to, to, how to break that down. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that some people kind of lack because they don't know what to do now. I have the scripture. Now what do I do after this? So um, I definitely want to say that is one thing that I have noticed about you is that yeah. in the pulpit, you are breaking it all the way down to where it can be understood on either level. Like you said, from the youngest to the oldest. And I think it's good well, that well, see, the amazing thing about that is uh, I wasn't trained to do that. Wow. It, it was just a part of what I said to myself. It got to be some tools to be applied to the message. Mm. I don't believe in sermon. I believe in a message. A sermon mm -hmm. is something that you outline, draw, and you've already uh critically put it together and and you read it mm -hmm. but my, my sermon is not like that it's an outline but it's not i'm not reading it i, right. I read the yeah. scriptures got you and i expound on on what the scripture means and mm -hmm. then after the scripture read it well in the common sense of the text of the scripture you see there are things that are be the apple so how are you gonna apply them it's that you gotta pull the nugget and put it in sentence yeah 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 here and then they can mimic that because I tell you get saved, but how do you get saved? Right, I, I right. You, so what, what do I have faith. to do? How do you walk by faith? I tell right. you, right. Trust the, how, do you, how do you trust God? How? You got to have some application. Right. To do this. So this is one of the unique things that the Lord has, I say, downloaded into my, my heart and my soul is to give the people direction. Mm -hmm. What happened on the Mount of uh, trans, uh, Transfiguration? Jesus uh, experienced something. He shared it with the disciples. Mm -hmm. uh, when you go back to when uh, Moses went to the mountaintop to have that moment with the Lord. He wrote out the application of the Ten Commandments. So if right. God did that through the scripture, then we, uh, I, I would say we facilitators of the gospel. Mm -hmm. We have to also have something to make it applicable for the people to live by. That way, they'd be without excuse to say, well, I didn't know when it's been applied by the sermon. Right. And the sermon applies to the time that we live yeah mm. wow that's right there's no excuse right because then mm -hmm. you can't say well he ain't telling he me. ain't telling what to do <laughs> <laughs> like it it's like you're literally giving an instructional manual right step one step two step three mm -hmm. if you was to which, which i think would be an uh, awesome book of taking all of your uh applications that you come up with mm -hmm. and just yeah. the, these these are guidelines right to basically living right Mm -hmm. These are tools that you can use. That would be a good book. But <laughs> <laughs> and think about it. If, if you look at it, it's kind of one thing. If you look at it, that it is uh, what people need, right, to make it. Typically, yeah. you're educated, so if you don't get applicable things for your children, how are they gonna yeah. learn? They're they're not. Right. <laughs> you know, go and read the book and learn. What I'm right. reading, learn. <laughs> so. Right. That's why uh, the, the calling has been such a unique calling because every application, application I, I give, the Holy Spirit is given to me. It's prompted to me. I'm in the middle of my sleep, middle of the night. The Holy Spirit wakes me up and says, you know, write this down. Mm -hmm. And I, I write it down. I look at the message and I, and I go back over it. I, 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 I find too this my, my, my messages because yeah. I'm really sure when I speak that it's going to be applicable to the people. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to preach about Clinton Cotton. I'm people like. <laughs> Think kind of more. They got machines that do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't see. No, I rode the bugger to the to the uh, to the uh, to the church uh, to the church or uh, to the school. No, I, I, I drive infinity. Right. So, so, so I can't give you application of things that doesn't apply to the present state. Right. That's why the message cannot be a sermon. It has to be a message from the messenger mm -hmm. that gives it to the messenger to deliver. That's uh, so good. Man, that's good wow. stuff. Wow. I know there they there are definitely goods mm -hmm. and they're bads mm -hmm. of ministry. Can you explain yeah. in both di I mean dynamics of, of of your experience? Uh, well, the good has always been to be able to be used by the father. The bad is that sometimes being used by the father is not always appreciated. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the good is I, I deliver a message, but it's not always appreciated for the message that, that came from the messenger. Yeah. So, uh, but. If I, I wrote my first book, it was titled The Good, The Bad, The Ugly of Ministry. Yeah. Now, this is amazing. I've never been an author of any book, never been a writer. I was in Germany on an assignment. Uh, in fact, that was my first assignment out of the country. Uh, and I was to preach that morning. The night before I left, I wrote the whole book in eight hours. Wow. wow. What would it took months? Cause my editor, she said, 
how long you been writing this? I said, I wrote it overnight. She said, ain't no way in the world. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and all she had to do was do a little fine tune of mm-hmm. grammatical, criminal correction. I'm a country boy. I just say, I speak and I talk. <laughs> talk and I so my, my, my daughter, Sunshine, keep me from looking stupid. But, um, and I can appreciate that. But I wrote the book in one night, but it was so much that I experienced in ministry mm-hmm. that I could tell the story from behind the scene. Not yeah. behind the scene, but in the scene. Wow. Yeah. Because I was there when that word uh, infidelity committed, mm-hmm. uh, adultery committed. I was there when people would lie on each other. I was there when people was in practice in Belgium. See, I, I was in the middle of that, meaning I witnessed it for myself, but it did not turn my heart from God. It kind of gave me a different perspective about everybody in the church and I say. That's mm-hmm. the reality. Because when I go to church, when I finally did go to church, for real, for real, right. uh, I realized that everybody didn't love the Lord like I did. Mm-hmm. It was when the Holy Spirit told me, he said, this is the good part, this is the bad part, this is the ugly part. The good part is uh, I love everybody. Mm. The bad part is everybody don't love me back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And, wow. and the ugly part is that it's just the way it is. Wow. Mm. Wow. So we've talked about the pulpit. Come on now. But there's another pit. My Lord. That you like have your hand in and you devil around. My so Lord. tell us about how you went from the pulpit to Saving the souls. other pit that you have over here. <laughs> Well, it, it's so interesting because I've always had this passion for cooking. I mean, my mother was a cook, great cook. Uh, in fact, uh, all my cooking experience came from watching her. Her and I would sit down at the uh, and shed peas in her bedroom. We would shed mm. the peas and we would cook them. She would cook and I watch her. I just, I just learned to watch her. She never taught me what, verbatim like my application to scriptures and sermon. <laughs> gotcha. I just, I just, I just cheat watch her. You know, I just learn them all. <laughs> And I remember my brother, he was the one who was cooking the ribs for the uh, uh, family uh, get-together. And boy, they were really charred. I mean, when I say charred, <laughs> color my shirt. <laughs> and I mean, I, I learned it, uh, uh, not to appreciate uh, 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 liquid, what do they call that stuff? Uh, the lighter fluid. No, it's just the, um, uh, it's, it's, it's beef jerky. Oh. Mm. Mm. Those were the first beef jerkies reels wow. I ever had in my life. And I said, this can't be right. You know? Oh, no. And, uh, so, but even I learned from watching him what not to do. What not right. to do. So, <laughs> so over time, I, I, I kept on cooking. I, when I first started off, you know, I'm like the average person, you know, uh, you know, don't do the best at it. But I kept doing it. I kept being consistent at that. It got better and better. Where I was feeding people for free, then I woke up with my spray. I'm feeding folks for free. <laughs> I get paid for this gift. <laughs> now, with scripture, the gift give without a call, without <laughs> repentance. I mean, and I thought about, you know, the woman's word of his heart. So if I'm, I'm a cook, for at least get paid. Me. Right. And, um, but yeah. I kept doing it, and then it got better and better. And then I became a very, um, uh, very strategic about what mm. I do. I became intentional. Mm. I tried this. I tried. That. I was buying equipment, then realized it was going to be used for today's time. Mm. I, I got equipment for my business about ten years ago. Wow! wow. I, it, you know, because I, I didn't, I didn't see myself actually starting a business, but I always wanted to do this, but I didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. And and I, I just got to one one day. I woke up every day. I wake up, but the day that I did wake up that time, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to start. A, I'm going to get my food truck. Wow. And I pronounced that food for over 10 years. And all of them, one day, as y'all know the story, it, pop, it didn't pop up, it manifested. Right. But through the manifestation of it, I already been prepping for it. Mm-hmm. I already got, I already got the, 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 the recipe down right for the mm-hmm. uh, uh, barbecue sauce mm-hmm. that I created. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to uh, look at the, the, the reels when it's time to uh, to do the, the, the turn with them and how to stuff like that. Not turn too many times because you yeah. took too much time not to. Over the overnight season, so it was so many things I was learning. Yeah, as well as YouTube, I was YouTube <laughs> too. But I perfected what I learned, so that's right. nothing new on the sun. So what I've done is actually perfect what I've learned. What others are doing, I just do hmm. that. Wow. So how long have you actually been in the barbecue? Because I, I know you're, I, I know you're just now starting off, but mm-hmm. from that prepping time, because I know I, I, I call it prepping time like up to this mark of you actually being in but like how what's that gap how long was that the gap between actually the after food truck probably was 10 years mm. wow. easy, if not more because uh, 
and the thing about I, when I wanted food truck, I never seen a food truck. I just said I want a food truck. Right. <laughs> I mean, I never really saw one. I just said, man, I like having a food truck one day. In my mind, I what it would look like. And when I really saw one, I said, man, that's exactly what I envisioned. Mm. And uh, so it was like that time frame of being prepped for the prepping, I was already being prepped, unbeknown to me. So in other words, he doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't just lead and guide you to all truth about the gospel. He leads you to guide you to truth about how to operate in your craft. Right. So it was in my hand. God told Moses, he had Moses a question. He said, Moses, what's in your hand? And Moses said, step and God said, use it. So sometimes we have the gift in our hand, we're just not using our hands. Wow. Your deliverance, your your talent, your gift, your experience will always come through your own hands, mm. not God's. Good stuff. Wow. Man. What has been your most rewarding thing about being in the barbecue pit? Mm. Uh is enjoying people, watching people eat my food and enjoy it. Uh, seeing their faces, and you know, you know, as many people know, I, I always go live talking about the pit master. If you're looking, <laughs> you ain't looking. so, and that became my slogan, and that slogan just took off. And from that, I, I, it's like I have fun doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So my reward is when people write a review, how good it is. And mm -hmm. people write a review, you no, know, hey, they they got a chance to, to meet the pit master himself because I, just like as a pastor, I don't social distance myself from the people. I don't try to pretend like I'm this great. Uh, profit and uh, I'm too annoying for you to come around me so I don't greet y'all because y'all gonna steal my virtue my <laughs> head to the gnaw. I want to shake hands with folks. Right. And uh, so and it's like when I was called to ministry, first thing I said to the to the father, Lord, that you call me, I need to be me. Mm -hmm. I can't do this. Well, my brothers and my sister. Uh -huh. We gathered in his precious name. See, by then, I'm tired. <laughs> if I'm tired. I know the Holy Spirit's tired. He didn't call me to do that. So, and the Lord told me, He said, you know, you be you. Yeah. Be you in this, what, in this, in, in my, in the assignment. And then the same way I feel like, the same way I'm friendly in the business, I mean, the ministry, I should be friendly with my business because yeah. they're like, a pit master or chef coming out and greet the people mm -hmm. and so they have that that awe oh, moment i got you to meet the pit master yeah so that's yeah. What when people say oh i took a picture of the pit master you know we're social distance color code <laughs> you know, keep your mask on keep stay distant, yeah. honey. i think it's good because it's like uh like meeting the person who crafted everything meeting the person yeah. who mm -hmm. took time out to prepare this food it, it, it shows that you are number one a people person mm -hmm. And it, 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 you have the heart for the people, not only in ministry, but also the appetite. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I feel like that when it comes to the business, my motto is 100% satisf satisfaction. Mm. If you're not 100% satisfied with what I produce, you let me know. We'll make it right. We can't make it right. We'll give you money back. That's it. There's no argument because as a, a cook, as a, as a chef, or a pit master, some, sometimes, you, sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're not. <laughs> but most of the time I'm hot. I'm on point. <laughs> when I'm not on point, it becomes a challenge. But that, <laughs> you know, it ain't the pit master fault. <laughs> but, but we always make it right. And people are at odds because I tell them that. I, I, I'm that confident in what I do because I literally, I literally pray daily mm -hmm. as a vision. God, give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. Give me guidance on what to do. So when I come up with a new um a menu to food to the me it's called the holy spirit and give it to me because mm -hmm. what you, you like that's religion no it's not it's called relationship mm -hmm. right okay yeah that's yeah, not new on the sun but everything is new to us but that's new on the sun god already put it in there so i look at it so it goes back to this again i'm very passionate about the gospel i'm very passionate about the business mm -hmm. and i'm very passionate about people i'm a people person that's why i have a ministry and i have a business I'm a people person. Call me PP. Pit people. people person. People person. <laughs> I'm PPP. Pit people. The pit master people person. I was just about to say. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. The pit master that love people. Um, yes, yes. And I think that that's the one thing um, that is so unique is that you're able to still do what you love, be around people, you know, teach mm. and cook. Yeah. And still be able to reach the masses. So you're yes. speaking to, you know, Mo is, is teasing you, but you're speaking to the soul and feeding them, yeah. you know, the, the food that they need for their soul. And then you are feeding them in the natural being in, in the belly. And if you had no ribs, you better get you some. Please. But, get down there. 
But I think that's the the one thing that most of us don't do. Like you said, the the gift you have it, but how are we utilizing it? And so you've been gifted to um, be a people person, and then on um, both aspects of it, the thing that you have been called to do. And then the thing that you desire to do, you're still able to work with the people. And yeah. I and and that seems like the big bulk of, you know, what I'm gathering from the pit to the pit is it's still no matter what, it's all about the people. Yeah. Yeah. And and that part about being consistent. Mm-hmm. Consistency is always doing it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Now this there's always time for, you know, uh, adjustment. But the relationship is important. You know, if you go to Chick-fil-A you got the same type of treatment, mm-hmm. you know, no matter how bad a person may have a day, but they still going to treat you with a Chick-fil-A model. Yeah. I believe with my, the business and with the ministry, we treat people the way we want to be treated. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to give you a product that I won't eat myself. Mm-hmm. Not, well, yeah, that's true. I would not. There are some products that I could, I won't eat, but it's not because I don't want to eat it. It's just not my thing. Like, I don't like brisket. But mm. I'm the best brisket sitting master in the wow. state Show of Lord. Enough. Show enough. Oh, Lord. And the <laughs> crazy thing about this, about the, about the, uh, the brisket, it's a very uh, tedious type of uh, uh, process to cook a brisket. But self-taught. Wow. That's that's part of the gift. Self-taught. I'm able to do it. The first brisket I cooked, it was just, it was right for the first time. They got better and better. Right. So that means if you can cook a brisket, if you can cook a prime rib, man, you can cook a whole cow. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this man a cow. Uh, (laughs) And the thing about it, because I'm passionate about this thing, guys, I actually took time to study the different uh, uh, meat cuts of of the uh, of the cow. Mm. And we come out to the prime two, three. It's four types of brisket. That's a what you call a wagyu brisket. That brisket cost about fifteen dollars. I've heard of that. And uh, that's a special raised cow from the day time it's born to the process of its uh, uh, of uh, being butchered. He's actually treated like a human, really, wow. that, that particular cow. And then you got your, what you call your prime brisket, which is your average brisket of the top of the brisket that people would buy for holiday. Mm-hmm. But we, that's the only brisket we, we sell. And then you got your charged brisket. And then you got your, your select. So you take the, the three components of the brisket, the, the prime outside of a, 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 a ragu, that's the ragu brisket, it's a whole cow. And not a ragu brisket, it's the whole cow's ragu, made with race. But it's your average uh, purchase cow. Uh, take that whole line of his side, that top part where the, the cow is moving, mm-hmm. that's the part is working the muscle where it's going to be lean. Mm. Uh-huh. When I get to the milk session, that's the choice. It's just, it's, it's good, but it's, it's good, but it's not just good, but it's good. And then the select is the bottom part. That's, gotcha. that's the, what the catfish be, you know, mm-hmm. doing that job. <laughs> However, but I can take a choice, I can take a select, and I can take a prime, and, and you will not know the difference. Wow. Awesome, awesome. That is amazing. So, um, what is the, as I said, with the uh, ministry, mm-hmm. what is your goal? My goal for the ministry, again, goes back to this. To preach and teach a simple gospel that all live by. That, that's the goal. In other words, you know, no fanfare, no fluff. Just mm-hmm. set people in motion, create sons, birth sons and daughters for the gospel. Because the day will come, I won't be here no more. So mm-hmm. the legacy is going to be that he set things and all he trained the people to do well mm-hmm. and that's if that's gonna be a goal that, that'll be the goal that okay. after i leave this place <clears throat> my successor when i only do what i've done but do better <clears throat> what about in that uh pit master what about what, what what's the ultimate goal in that well that between you and Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's the same thing you know I, you know if you all remember i, I was preaching from the poor pit one day and i said i like to one day be part of the the, 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 the the corporate world where we pay taxes and, and create jobs. I should just say create jobs. And never, I said never taxes, part of <laughs> but create jobs. Yeah. That that way uh, we become a franchise. Chief mm-hmm. Lay and McDonald's start off, and McDonald's started with, with two brothers named Mac, the last name was McDonald's. Mm-hmm. They sold they they basically sold they they, they name uh, to uh, uh, <clears throat> the present owner, uh, which he's you know, he's no longer proud. Crawl. And that's how that business transition. And it, it still got the arch. But right. the arch improved. Mm-hmm. And it started with one restaurant. Well, Chipotle started one restaurant and they got restaurants all over the country. Mm-hmm. So what is preventing it must touch barbecue industry? There you go. Industry from being a new life. Right. Wow. So it's like being a visionary, 
and you see uh, this is good now let me try the next let me mm-hmm. get my second truck let me get my third truck let me get my fourth truck and then i train uh my son mo and chandler and uh, uh brother bernard uh and brother reg and they know how to how to operate the business so mm-hmm. they can be a front part of the franchise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they, and it lives on if your if your vision goes to the grave with you mm. you didn't have a vision wow that's good it just, it just was a dream wow wow that's real good explain the difference between dream and, and, and vision. vision yes to, to the people a who dream don't understand is one one has a desire uh a, a insight on something but the vision when it becomes a reality mm. because you can dream unless the dream transition to a reality of a vision to be a visionary you have to be a dreamer to be a dreamer you have to be in have vision so they both work together but if you just had a dream and you didn't put forth the vision side of it then it just was just was a dream wow, wow. so if i lord took me home tonight god forbid but if he does all is well world change would still operate mm-hmm. wow yeah. it's god's work right him yeah. still had a potential to operate because i already trained uh my son them right. how to do the business now right. it'd be up to them to take it to the next level mm-hmm. yeah Wow. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's real good. So for um for pastors, what yes. advice would you give them within our current, you know, the COVID and all of that? What advice or what encouragement would you provide to pastors to continue to fight this, you know, fight this good fight of faith? To do what We've been called is to uh, uh, teach men and women of God. Teach be fishermen of men. Teach the people how to uh, manage their emotion, their energy. Uh, find a way to stay connected to the, to the members. You can't connect to every member. Mount people we got. I can't. There's no way I can, I can call every member every day. Uh, but I have a system in place where they have opportunity to to interact with me, such mm-hmm. as you know the, what we call the process note. Mm-hmm. They fill out the process note. They send it back to me. I look at it. Now I know what condition they're going through. They're in what position they're facing at this moment. I'm able to minister that area accordingly. So every pastor should have to have a heart for the people. Mm-hmm. You're a heart for the people. That means you're going to give yourself to the people. So what, what I know it's kind of a little more than you asked, but what the pandemic really did for the church, it was, it exposed this hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. It exposed where well, uh, really, some of them didn't have nothing to say anyway. Wow. Uh, yeah. And some of them weren't even called. It, mm. it just it was a good idea. It was a job opportunity. It was a place of employment. And because when you're in a pandemic, which we've never not been in a pandemic, we've always been in a pandemic. Yeah. Some form or another. Right. You know, you're a slave. That's a pandemic. You don't have a job. That's a pandemic. Right. Yeah. If you vote, that's a pandemic. You're poor. <laughs> right. If you're homeless, that's a pandemic. Right. So we always have been in a pandemic. Right. But in this pandemic, it really was an eye opener. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what I want to share with every pastor is if you've been called, these are the ones that have been called and chosen. Keep doing what you're, you're doing, but make sure you're doing it for God. Mm, yeah. That's good. And what would you say to a person who's trying to strike out into business and really trying to step out there and do this thing? What are your encouraging words for them? Count the calls. Count mm. the calls. Uh, and I apply that scripture in the Bible says that no, no man builds a house without counting the calls. Other words, no, that's a price of the material. That's a price of your time. That's research. You know, just don't jump out to me, jump out of my faith. No, that's called faith foolishness. But when you jump out by faith, that means you already did your homework. Mm. Before we started the food business, we already did our homework. Mm-hmm. We, already, we went through the process of uh, what it took to, to get certified. We uh, we went through the process of being able to get the uh, business license. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like just go to some business, like go start your business. No, you got to. You gotta do your homework right yeah. to make sure that's what you're gonna want to do because once you once you step out it's out right you know, i remember when it looked to a point like man like this thing gonna, not gonna come to a close because nothing seems to be working it's working but it's not working yeah you think you're making progress you ain't made progress <laughs> but you made progress <laughs> right and it became a test so i would tell any person that has a business idea do your homework first and count the calls now the counter calls don't mean negativity it means make sure that you prep it. it it cost me rather a hundred thousand dollars to get the business going wow that i'm, I'm still paying the debt and right. i got went and got my own account let's do this right no no <laughs> credit card 
<laughs> first along, seesaw, and everything. You know. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, but it was it was a sacrifice we made. Uh -huh. You know. I mean, when you have to literally take your saving, you take uh, your, your 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 retirement, and you put it into a business, not knowing overall the outcome of it, but you trust God. It's faith. When I started, right. when the world change was started, I don't like to say I, okay? it was God's work. But I was the first one to invest the first $25,000 into the ministry. Wow. Yeah. Meaning, I bought the land right. at the time. And uh, paid, paid the land was debt free. The only thing we had to pay was the mortgage with the builder. That's why I believe in generational wealth. Mm. On the land. Don't worry about the building. On the land. Yeah, Don't worry right. about the house. On the land. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I would tell anyone. If you feel like God called, if you not that God called, if you feel that it's your desire to do whatever business that you want to step out and do, do the homework, do your research, talk to people that are in the business. Uh, don't try to be a ball one wonder, uh, ball wonder. Just don't try to be an island. Yeah. Don't try to prove that. See the wisdom those have done, and, mm -hmm. and get you a good mentor who's going to really mentor you, and not try to hold you back. Wow, that's good. That's very good. That is. Awesome, and we will also put all location information. Right. I know you are open on every Friday and Saturday. Yes, could you give us the address Sundays. of where you at? The Lord's name. No, <laughs> <laughs> they ain't open. <laughs> <laughs> had a guy call me today. Oh, you open? I looked at it like I, if I if you could saw my face, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know we ain't open. <laughs> but, you should say Chick Fil A yeah, open. Okay. No. <laughs> Saturday, Friday, Saturday. With the with the future possibility of uh, the business being a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, right now I'm not interested in doing a five day work. I didn't, I didn't come part time minutes to do part time work. You know, mm -hmm. this is my passion. This is my, this is my dream come to pass to the vision. But the ministry is far first and first most foremost. Mm -hmm. Got you. Now, where is the? Well, I know they can't go to the church yet. Give us the address of the church and your also location of the business. The church address is 12401 After Vista Drive uh, here in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, and the business address is 5150 Hamilton Road. So, one of those locations you can find. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once, once the doors are checked open up, uh, I will feed your soul. And uh, on throughout the week, if you want some good soul food, we'll feed you some food, food for the soul. For the yeah. for, for the for your for your soul. And that same one. Both same one, food, same way. Feed soul food. All the same. Either way, you're gonna get full. Walking away full. <laughs> you're gonna be full. And you're this, gonna be stripped to be full. <laughs> and this has been an awesome yeah. conversation. This is your local, local pit master. Yes. Um as you said, and pastor, and pastor. Yes, so he can <laughs> shepherd you and feed you. Yes, he can, both spiritually <laughs> and physically. Lead you to the <laughs> Lord and lead you to some good food. <laughs> so, um, like we always say around about this time, keep God first, and the rest will be added. Thank you for joining us.